Hopshi. Recorded live. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to another open call of the University of Eucadia Wednesday night um, intro calls with uh, your host, Franco Collins. Uh, I'm Brian T. Collins. And uh, tonight there's a lot of information to share coming out uh, with all kinds of things, but private banks, uh, things in the news about what the planet is up to. And uh, yeah, moving forward in what we're doing, and that's also in the restoration of law. And what better than to uh, talk with Frank on these t- these topics? There's lots to cover, so why don't you uh, take it away, Frank? Thanks, Brian. Hello, everyone who are on the call at the moment, and thanks again for coming on. Also, thank you for all those who are not able to be on the call tonight, but will be listening to the call later, either by downloading the call from the University of Acadia at uh, university.acadia.info, or via talk show. Yes, as Brian says, there's a lot happening, and I, I think it's appropriate, given the amount of change that's happening in the world, that we start tonight with the changing of the world, and just putting things into perspective from the point of view of Eucadia and what we say about these major climatic events and their significance. So the, the things tonight I'd like to talk about is that, to start with, changing world, There are two PDFs because we are going to talk about the Acadian money system tonight, which is an essential part of the community. So I promise to you that we're moving on this. Tonight we are talking about the nuts and bolts. And for that, I'm going to ask all of you who are on the call to please go to one, one-heaven.org. And when you get to the home page, you'll see at the bottom right, and I'm sorry it's only such a temporary measure to do it this way, but there are two links that you will see on the home page. The first says Supreme Financial System. The second links to Supreme Financial System products. I ask all of you who are on the call and those that are going to be listening later to please go there and download those two PDFs because later in the call we'll be referring to them. So that's the second, money. And the currency system very soon about to be turned on. I want to talk about the community models and the changes that we've done in identifying what we previously called national societies as universities, what we previously called state societies as provinces, and what we called local now as campuses. And I want to go through that. I also want to talk, because this is a topic that is crucial to many on the call, I want to talk about the updates on court court process, feedback, focus, how to address what seems to be the constant changing that's going on with the bar guild, the private bar guilds. I want to share with you and show you how to download the executor letter if you haven't heard about this already and how you might use it. So I want to cover those things. And then I want to talk, finish, finish the, the conversation tonight about on-the-ground support and the ongoing excellent offering of help that many of you have started to do in focusing on the completion of missing codes of law and also those of you that have started to offer help to other members in providing different services, whether that be in the production of the identification cards and so on. I want to talk about that because this is an important issue that we need to cover too about how we we help each other now and what will be happening in the future in terms of identifications and production of documents and storing of documents. So there's a lot to talk about tonight. So it's changing the world, the money system. Please download those two documents I mentioned on the home page, at the bottom right of the home page of One Heaven. The community model and the changes and what that means. Courts, talk about the executive letter, talk about the writs, talk about important insights and the significance of those and on-the-ground support. I hope we can cover all of that in the time. I don't want to be speaking at a 1,000 miles an hour, so hopefully if we we do cover it, we might go a little bit over the hour, but I think it's important to try and keep it as much as possible to the hour. And then, of course, I look forward to answering your questions, whether the questions are typed in uh, through the TalkShoe interface 
or through calls. I, I would like to ask this if I could please tonight because I think this is important for all that are listening. Can I ask, if you've got questions, please um, get straight into them. If there's something you want to talk about in terms of sharing, I think this is a forum that's probably not best for, the, for that kind of dialogue. Please, the Eucadia Forum is there to be able to express opinions and ideas. And definitely, if you've got feedback, we do want to hear feedback. Now, if it's important feedback, please, again, we would love to get it posted on university. If you've got a question on the forum, can I ask, please put in, in caps question, because then I can see it. It's very hard and it's been difficult for me in some weeks to actually see the questions. And if you've got questions, please wait till the question time and start listing them because then I can start reading them amongst the, the different conversation. Well, let's start. I was very disappointed to see when I picked up the paper this morning, but not unexpected, that the kind of characters that take other people's misery and use it for their own ends have already started to bark and moot about the terrible tragedies of Japan. There is a history, and unfortunately, there is a very un sad history that those that find themselves in positions to help and advise and teach and learn sometimes take the misery of others to their advantage. And so a number of commentators, particularly a number of right-wing commentators and extreme commentators, have already started to say that what has taken place in Japan is somehow linked to either God or Gaia, the Earth, punishing us. This is absolute and complete and utter rubbish. It, in fact, is just the continuation of a behaviour where people in power or people who want power have used the tragedy of others for their own ends. Now, if I took you back to a period in 1782 to 1783 when the volcano complex of Iceland called Luki or Laki, which means Loki is another interpretation of that, which means effectively the Icelandic god equivalent to Satan exploded. It caused mass devastation across Europe and up to one quarter of the poorest people across Western Europe died of starvation in a period of about a year, a year and a half. Now, they write this out of history books. And there's a reason why they write this out of history books. Because if you look at this period of about 1782 to 1783, this is when the Treaty of Paris was signed. This is when the Treaty with the King was signed. This is when men that were supposed to be patriots in America sailed to Europe went to Venice, returned no longer simply as, as uh, patriots, but they came back with titles that are Roman ecclesiastical positions. Ministers plenipotentiary is what they returned as, as ministers of the Roman cult. And at this time, Venice, that had lost control, Venice that had become uh, a relevance for many people seized the death and mayhem around it and constituted what we know today as the Illuminati or the Sovereign Knights of Malta. That's when they were formed. And the celebration they formed was the largest sacrifice of people until World War II, the longest running orgy in history. And at that, the nobles the intelligentsia, and for the first time these groups came together, the industrialists, the nobles, the intelligentsia, the politicians, all came together and were offered esteemed positions in the new Illuminati, and that system has been running ever since. So when tragedy strikes, unfortunately, in history, it is these vultures 
and parasites that have taken advantage. Now, Eucadia says, and people who view the world, even without Eucadia, but view the world in the context of history and geology and the cycle, recognize that what's happened in Japan, what happened in New Zealand, and what will be happening at some point on the west coast of the United States is part of a natural cycle, albeit one that we have not, I don't believe, seen in many hundreds and hundreds of generations. The Earth goes through cycles. The top end of the Sahara was at one time one of the most fertile places on the planet, as was Saudi Arabia. It is now the largest desert in the world. Antarctica had forests. So seasons and cycles and change see places of great prosperity and life just as the season of the year goes to autumn, to winter, and returns to spring, so it is that these greater cycles over tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of years unfold. The earth does not wish to destroy us. If the earth wished to destroy us, we would not be here. We would not be here. And when people talk about weapons such as harp and other things, let's put it in perspective. There is no weapon on the planet that can unleash the kind of power that can shift an entire set of islands, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of tons, eight feet towards America and two feet down. That is not human endeavor. That is the earth. Now, just because an ant hides or shines a, a magnifying glass or a child stands at the beach and puts their hand against the wave doesn't mean that that child is changing the effect of the waves. And we need to put ourselves in perspective here. There are cycles happening that we've been told about for a long, long time. Our ancestors gave us a early warning system. And they did that in the form of prophecy. Now, if you read the prophecies as they were intended to be understood, it is not the end of our world, it is the end of their world. And their world is the world of the parasite, the world that enslaves us, the world that lies to us, the world that feeds off our integrity and our energy, the world that perverts us, the world that distracts us, the world that uses fear to keep us compliant. That is the world that the prophecies of Malachi say is ending. That is the world that the prophecies of Daniel and the prophecies of Revelation in 1260 years since the formation of the Roman cult, 751. 751 and 1260 is 2011. This is the year that it ends. The prophecies of Nostradamus, this is the time it ends. The prophecies of Edgar Casey. This is the time it ends. The prophecies of the minds. This is the period that their world ends. Not our world, not the earth. The earth is not here to commit suicide. The earth doesn't want to kill itself. The sun doesn't want to kill the earth. The sun could destroy life at any moment. We live within the sun. Our whole perception of the world and life and the universe has been deliberately corrupted by these people. The sun, we don't, we don't orbit the sun, we are in the sun and our position is determined to a very, very precise moment by moment, instant by instant, at the will of the sun. The sun does not wish to destroy us. The opposite. The earth does not wish to destroy us, the opposite. And under the covenant of one heaven, we say that we who awake up, we who no longer fear, we who will no longer be slaves, we who forgive those that have hurt us and move on and are 